Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG, the new channel for the basically the new channel that I just started just recently. I have a main channel which is the Sovereign RPG channel, which does survival RPGs, etc. etc. Guides and reviews of different survival games. But I'm really into my RPGs as well, so I thought I'd start up a new channel and start doing some let's plays on old and new RPGs. So I hope it's something you guys would enjoy. And if you do enjoy it, remember to throw up a like. And if you'd like to see more of the Let's Play series, remember to throw up a subscribe. So let's get straight into it. This is Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. I've played this game a million times before. It, granted, it has been a while since I've last time I've actually played the game. But we're going to go through. We're going to do as much as possible. There's a lot of the Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition that I don't remember. But the early game to mid game is very much memorable. Mainly because I've created a million characters. And I tend to start off Baldur's Gate and just create a character over and over and over again. As you'll see with my pre-generated characters. So we're going to be playing on cool rules. There's not going to be like any sort of completionist or a uh, sort of really hard playthrough. I'm just going to be playing through because I enjoy the story behind Baldur's Gate and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it too. Let's jump into a new game and we're going to import a character. Now I've got like an absolutely copious amount of characters and I'm not sure what I'm going to be playing as of right now. I'm probably going to go for the Cleric Ranger. I do love the Cleric Ranger, and I've taken off the option to take away, like, to nerf the Cleric Ranger. But I do really enjoy the way the Cleric Ranger plays. So we're going to go for that. We're going to go for Ghoul as the racial enemy. We'll go through all the stats in just a moment. I'm going to go for Ghoul as racial enemy because there's a lot of that later on, and there's a lot of undead later on in BG2 when we get to that point. So basically, this is our character. He's a half-elf cleric ranger. He's got 1866 strength, 18 dexterity, 18 constitution, 18 intelligence, and 18 wisdom. Now, this is not cheating. This was a roll. I used an auto roller, which is what I do because I can't be asked to sit there and click it over and over and over again. I will leave a link for the auto roller in the description if it's something that you guys want to take a look at when you're doing it. It basically just clicks re-roll it clicks uh, restore and all that sort of stuff and when you're clicking on the, rest the store button when you go to the abilities section and it'll do that over and over again until like leave it for an hour leave it for two hours leave it all night if you want to get that perfect roll and it will just store it and then when you hold down x it will stop it and you can go in and put your stats in this is basically what the stats are on this character so his appearance is going to be black and blue because obviously the picture is black and blue and we're going to be going for the commanding because it is my, the best power. voice in my opinion. So the name of this guy is Valgor, but we're going to change it because I, I normally use this guy as a secondary. Now we're going to have a secondary character because I like to have a, a, a high charisma character, especially when I'm doing my playthroughs for the RP side of things. We're going to go to create party i'm going to create a secondary character we're going to import this character and this one is going to be obviously this one is going to be auto rolled as well i don't know if we're going to go for do i have a sorcerer saved i do not have a sorcerer saved that is absolutely not great do i have one here no fighter mage bard the barbarian tirana that's the other guy's stuff rock the shaman berserker cavalier we could go for the cavalier we can have a we can have a tanky type character in there as well so we're gonna go for appearance it's gonna be the white and blah 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 and we're gonna go for the maybe the earnest your life ends here i alone belong here ah we can go with that one why not he sounds a bit like thingy we called him cadgar for some reason but we're gonna do that anyway we've got 18 36 strength 18 dexterity 18 constitution 18 wisdom and 18 charisma and we dumped the intelligence going for two-handed sword and two-handed weapon style on this guy i just dumped the intelligence because it really doesn't need it i'm not going to be using any items on him he's just my charisma slave basically he's going to be able to tank quite a lot and we can just swap in a sword and shield if it needs a bit more tanking than usual but we're not actually going to need it that much we're going to go for the two-handed because he's going to be a dps and we're going to be on the sort of core rules maybe even just a little bit lower than the core rules We'll have to actually see when we get into here. Let's go. We're going to have normal rules or we're going to have setting as aimed at veteran players who are well versed in AD and D mechanics. Enemies deal full damage and employ advanced combat tactics. Slightly stronger enemy types appear. And enemy groups are more varied. Now we could go through with the core rules or we can just go normal. 
because there are still a lot of the game that i can't really remember but we're gonna you know what we'll try it and see what happens we can change it later on the top the cliffs that rise from the sword coast the citadel of candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. it is an imposing fortress kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the forgotten realms it is secluded highly regimented and it is home Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your 20 years of life within this keep's austere walls, under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters, lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold, that of your true heritage. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever, and now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day. Imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel, he has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candlekeep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey and that's basically the intro now i'm not going to go through every single bit of like uh, we're going to move this guy to first because we want him to be the party leader with his high charisma but we're not going to be going through everything that's being said we're going to go through the stuff that i find interesting and the stuff that i remember that's really good we're probably going to do most of the sort of hidden stuff like with Firebeard, we're going to go get the 2,000 gold nearly from the person in this room. All right, all and we're right. going to maybe drop off the Bolts quest down in the bottom left of the map. But we're just going to be doing this. Up. So basically, when you go to Firebeard, we're going to go to him, we're going to speak to him. You speak to him once, it gives you a quest, the quest pops up. But if you speak to this gentleman 30 times, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. There we go. 300 gold. It's an Easter egg from back in the day. Like it's, it's, it's been a long, long time that people have known about this one. So we're going to go into this room up here. This is something that people don't really know about when you speak to these guys. They give different options if you charm them. So if you have a character that you can charm with early in the game, this is actually really good. But what we're going to do, we're going to speak to this no nobleman. You need a good fire, warm, chill stairs of those monks, etc, etc. Now, if you go in here... Oh, yes, darling, they are most standoffish. If you go for option three, I will not let it concern you, milady. Perhaps they are not used to the wealth such as yours. You are quite wealthy, are you not? To bring a lot of expensive jewelry with you? Question mark. Perhaps that was it. If you have 18 charisma at the start, you can get this person to put in the, like, to put her jewelry into a box upstairs. So they're going to be locking that back up in a room. And he says, a capital idea, lovey. But because we are who we are, we do not have the actual ability to go in and break the lock, which is kind of a ball ache. But we got that 300 extra gold. Now, if you click on this button down here, it actually keeps these boxes highlighted all the time. So you don't have to hold down tab. It keeps your hand away from the keyboard if you don't need to use it. So we're going to go inside here. This one's, this one's unlocked and there should be some more stuff over here. We're probably not going to do that. We're actually just going to bust these locks because we don't have a, uh, a thief with us at the moment. We won't get that until after we get out of Candlekeep when we get our, spoiler alert, sister. Which I'm so glad there isn't a chance for you to do some naughtiness because like the <laughs> back in the day, there was some uh, RPGs that uh, made some various decisions, which I find better because there's no holds barred in the old school RPG days when you can tell whatever story you wanted to tell. But this box here would be the one that you normally break into. 
and we fail to force the lock both of us because we need to have Orbi a barbarian with 19 strength as a half orc or you can do it as 18 strength but 19 strength is definitely 100 chance to open a box and then you just enrage and you'll be able to break that lock and you'll get 1750 gold coins worth of stuff in there now we got this dude over here this guy's gonna have some nom noms in here but what we're gonna do your wish is actually go to our fists yes. on this guy Hurry we're gonna up. go over here and we're gonna knock him out ah. knock him out well okay miss 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 there we go he's unconscious you now you can it, stop you oh he's not unconscious why is he not unconscious unconscious there we go. He's out right, cold. He's out right. cold. Stop hitting him. Now we're going to go over and break into this lock. Successfully opened it. We got a ring. That's 150 gold right there. Let's get out. Get downstairs. There's nothing else we can do up here. I wish we could open that with like uh, any right, kinds of locks. Right. But when you knock that guy out, it doesn't bring any guards or anything. You just basically crack on, steal his stuff, go down to Winthrope and sell some stuff and things. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. Now that is literally, I, I still remember and still say that every now and then randomly, even though I'm way older than I was when that first came out. Well, don't forget the 10,000 gold piece book entrance fee is blah, blah, blah. You always a big kidder. Sure. What do you have? Uh, we are currently, so this guy, I believe is actually going to be Warhammers. If I remember correctly, he might be flails. I have to double check, but we need to get a, I will sell these two in here. Got 773 in our gold pouch. Uh, we'll grab you uh, the splint mail. You're going to be heading up to the town. We'll grab you the chain mail. We'll go up, grab you the two handed sword and a helmet. That's going to be you sorted for now. I have to remember what we actually set this character as. It's Flail Morning Star, Warhammer, and two weapon style. Okay, so we can use Warhammer and Flail. We'll use a morning star because it's actually a better damage. Weirdly enough. But later on in the game when we start getting some of the big boy stuff, it's gonna be uh really, really, really good when we're gonna get that stuff out there. We can get the flail of ages, etc. etc. So let's go in, let's go buy him a warhammer. We can we can dual wield warhammers for the moment because we do get that secondary warhammer out of the box. Because obviously your weapons have the chance of breaking. Which is never good. So let's put the warhammer in there. We'll just throw the stuff on the floor. It's worth one gold piece. We'll have you in your chain mail. Stick you in your splint with your two-hander. Throw that on the floor and put the helmet on. Now we didn't get a helmet for our cleric My ranger. As clean as an elven arse. As I'm going through this really quickly, all the way to the bottom. Bye. Thank you very much. All right, all right. Now, usually when you're playing these games, you're going to have to, you're going to want to have like some range guys. We can use uh, Imowen when we get her. We might get Nera, but instead of Nera, I might go straight and just grab Minsk and then go save Dinah here right, and right. have her as the spellcaster. Usually I'd want to wait until maybe six level. Now we're going to, you know what? We'll just grab these crests around here. So you're going to speak to her. Then you're going to go over to this person. If you haven't done any of these things before, we're just going to run around. It's going to tell you at the start of the game, you're going to want to go around clockwise. I forgot something. I knew I'd forget something while I was talking. I forgot to get the bolts. Someone probably bought that when I was actually grabbing it. We grab the bolts because it's one of the quests we get to give in something that we just randomly buy, and it's better to run down there and grab it, even though we have to come back and speak to Elven here. Any Elven here. The mage in the corner by the fire over there. Where are the bolts? There we go. Buy one set of bolts. Thank you. Let's rock and roll. Hide away that which should not see the sun's light. Oh, okay. Thanks for that. That sounds way more of a paladin thing to say, to be perfectly honest. So let's go into this first room. We're going to get assassinated. Hello. Or they're going to try to assassinate us. Thank you. I do not recognize you. Who are you? Don't care. Bye-bye. Bonk. Oh, it didn't. There we go. One hit. All right, all right. We're not going to grab any of that, like the daggers and stuff, because they're only worth one gold, like one gold coin each. Let's go in here and grab it. And it's such a. I love the fact that we have this option in the enhanced edition that wasn't in the original Baldur's Gate. 
They can just, we used to, I used to run around with my finger on a, there's the secondary war hammer for our gentleman in case it breaks because of the iron shortage, which is part of the first thing. Pard is going to come up and speak to us. And he gives us one. If we're in a, in a group, if you're creating multiple characters, this is what's normally going to be coming up. But when you're solo, it will come up and you can say something like, oh, the pain, this guy attacked me. It was really bad. I'm so scared. But when you're in a group, do do? it doesn't actually do anything. So we're going to grab the quest for Drepin's Cow. We're going to grab the book. Uh, we can go give that in later. I'm not going to do the quest here. I'm going to move down to Hull. Maybe kill the rats. Just for a little bit of extra XP. Nothing wrong with that. John Delar, if we just speak to him, you speak to him and he's like, oh, attack me in my range, dude, friend. We're going to go and just murder him. Just have to hit him once. Boom. And he's gone. Oh, he's not. There he is. He's gone. Let's go speak to this gentleman. Little dwarven friend. Get that quest. Open it up. It's just giving us a little bit of extra XP. And we are going to... I just unpause. Oh, okay. What did you cast? Armor of Faith. Oh, because he's got his... A thing that the uh, Enhanced Edition has is it has custom scripts. Now you can customize, go into customize scripts and you can sort of click attack enemies, prefer melee weapons, etc. Don't use items, use special abilities. Use offensive spells, defensive spells. We can use the defensive spells and the like find traps, hide in shadows, sing bard song, turn undead. We can have that turn on because we, oh no, that's the wrong one. Oh wait, no, he can because he's a cavalier. We're going to do really well against the undead when we get to that point. Uh, we have this, prefer melee weapons, blah, 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 and turn on dead, turn on, lovely jubbly. Are you in there, have you killed the rats? Still fine, one rat, there we go. Should be another rat round here that we may have missed. Nope, all good. I think there's only one thing up in this actual barrel up here. I think these two are empty. There's a ring in there. Every little bit of coin helps. Now we're going to speak to this dude. He's going to give us some nom noms. Here's five gold pieces for killing all these rats. Don't join the armed forces. You inform you of full danger when you enter. Okay. Good times. So now we're going to speak to Hull. Speak mm. to Hull and get all of the nom noms from Hull's sword. He's going to ask you to give him the quest. This person is going to come and speak to you down here. Our the rules. gate warden. Oh, if you are not in a group, he's going to tell you you can do some extra group stuff. And you can uh, go inside and it's going to teach you how to work as a group. But when you're already in a group, it won't come up and you can just run around. We're going to go over here and someone else is going to try to assassinate us. I don't know why I said assassinate. Go inside. He's going to say hi. And I'm going to go, hi. That I am. Do I know you? Dead. It's him. Now, if you've got the S SCS mod for this, and if you use the SCS mod, these guys have actually got assassin kits and they can actually poison you to death. Like, and it, it will kill you. You cannot out heal it. This is another person that you'd have. Oh, it was such a bad experience. Someone tried to murder me. So we're going to go inside this next room. Speak to Fuller. What we got here? Yeah, uh, I was just wondering if you have any errands I could run. Yes, you want some bolts. Speak to him again. Give that in. Get some 50 and a dagger, which is a dagger plus one, which we're not currently using. We're going to take the antidote and the sword. One to give to Hull and one to give to the, the potion to the... Oh, I uh, forgot to go in here. Uh, one, we're going to give uh, the sword to Hull, which is here. We're going to go up and give the potion to the cow dude and then go and give the book to the lady at the top there. It's only a couple of hundred XP and it's not nothing like you can skip it all and just carry on because you can farm XP from the ank eggs and stuff. But I like to do a little bit of everything while I'm running through. Well, there's Emmerwin. I'm afraid I cannot chat today. There's no way you could come. Grime would never allow it. Oh, I know. Old stick in the muddy is. Greetings. Again, like, uh, Emmerwin, Emmerwin's okay in BG2, the way she speaks and stuff, but she's kind of, like, whiny in this one, which is why a lot of people, because she has 16 charisma, I believe it's 16, and uh, Jahira has 15, so you can have, if you don't have a charisma-based character and you're sort of min-maxing the stats, like I'm kind of doing with the Cleric Ranger, you're going to be sort of using either Jahira or Emmerwin as your, um, oh, we need to go back and speak to Hull. You're going to be using them as your main character because they're going to have the highest charisma in the group, at least until you find a paladin later on. But I think the paladin in this one is actually evil. So I don't know if you can use him. I think is, uh, if I remember correctly, I haven't played a lot of the sort of characters that come with the 
So we're going to give that in there. A lot of the characters of the comedy enhanced edition because I really do love the original characters, the ones that were made by sort of uh, the original developers. I love the story behind them, everything that's done with them. It's really, really cool. We did get that scroll off of uh, for Firebeard, right? I believe we did. I hope we did, otherwise we're going to have to go back bloody through there. So with that antidote, you're just going to go to Drepin. What do you need? Bonk. There you go. Thank you very much. There's 50, and you lost the item of the antidote. Go over to this lady over here, give her a book, and go and give the scroll and get a protection from evil from Firebeard. No, we don't want to speak to the tutor. Holy, what, how many watchers are running around? What the hell's going on? Hello. I haven't seen them moving around like that before. So we've got the Lynx Eye gem, so we can go and sell some extra Nom Noms. We might pick up Nera later so we can get the gem bag. I think that might be a good idea. Hello, Cad Gar, let's go. Thank you. Protection from evil, and it gives it to Sovereign, our main character. Let's go and sell these gems that we picked up. My hotel's as clean as an Alvin arse. Uh, we got the ring and the blah blah that dagger mm. we won't we'll sell it later because you can get 150 oh, gold for it i do believe so now we're actually finishing here there's another quest you can do over here but i'm not going to do that one it's a little bit too much for my liking so we're going to finish off in candle keep and get out of here and we might put a cut in it for the first one because it's just going to be like the character creation and get any initial candle keep set up I and i'm really hopefully why are you talking to me again? Sure go and grind, listen well for without knowledge. Okay, because he's, he's telling me. Normally, once you've done all those quests, you'll get a little achievement if you've got this on Steam, which is the completionist achievement. You just you don't have to do this one to get that completionist achievement. Let's go and speak to Grian. Oh, I'm ready to go right now. Boom, we're off. My other guy, Cadgar, just Cadgar. vanished, disappeared. If you ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Got a little bit of a heal there, thank you very much. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I'll explain everything as soon as there is time. It's always funny to me that he said, I'm going to explain to you in due time, and then boom, two feet later. No, Grian, you're not going to tell me, mate. For an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. Fair enough. Fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unheard. I'm sorry that you feel that way, old man. Get out of here. We're going to do a run on Grian's just going to absolutely obliterate 90% of this party because he's super strong. Just absolute animal. Sometimes I've had the script where like he'll actually kill the cleric in the background. Poor Grian. Sarah, well, it's especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. You're actually like so when you're talking about like the candle keep guys there's several books that actually tell a story oh we'll just pick up emma real quick how could you have known grind didn't even tell me and she's just like i'm following you we're gonna keep her anyway because we're gonna make her a thief mage we're gonna get her up to thief level four then jewel her into a mage 
because of her actual stats over here she has a 17 intelligence she has pretty decent charisma which is why you'd use her as a party leader but she's so goddamn whiny that i just i'd rather listen to jahira turn around and say and call me an omnipresent authority figure which is absolutely beautiful we got high dexterity you got the 16 constitution which can max out the hp for the mage anything that isn't a fighter you only need 16 constitution and with the 17 intelligence you can get an item later or just give her the intelligent book to get to 18 but you're generally going to want to give all of the books etc to your main character with the one you're going to be passing along to the next game Hurry yes anyway up. about the candle keep mages there are some seriously powerful people inside of the actual like the whole of candle keep they're old adventurers and uh, people that are uh, like super powerful like M elminster and stuff like that well elminster isn't part of candle keep but he's friends with a lot of adventurers that are in there if you know anything about elminster he's a bit of a he's a bit of a boy he's a bit of a lad he does a lot of good stuff and a lot of bad stuff if you look at the law behind now remember we click this button up here what is that I've not seen that before. We're going to grab that note. We don't really need it. But we're going to grab it anyway. And what we're going to do is copy the note down. Note copied and just drop it on the floor. What is that anyway? Garnet gem. I've not seen that garnet gem. Maybe it's randomized on that bit of loot. So actually, I'm going to finish off this map before we finish off this episode. Uh, before we go on to the next one. I'm hopefully going to be dropping these every every day hopefully do a bit of let's play every day 30 minutes to an hour <laughs> excuse me i got a little bit of a cough and we're going to try and go through as much as we can with as much detail as we can and hopefully you guys are actually enjoying that we're going to talk to zara monteron these guys i tend to kill these guys sometimes actually like i just kill them straight up because they are oh, not nice people uh i'd be grateful for any assistance and because we have high like a high uh, charisma you can actually get them to blah 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 as payments and i would join you but i wish to meet someone first we pressure the time but it's best to travel accompanied if you don't have high charisma these guys will just walk off and you'll never see them again but the only reason we're getting them in a party is to steal their nom noms they have a couple of potions we can stick the uh, studded armor onto mon She's got the free health potions, but we're going to give that to our guy up here. What potion was this? Potion of clarity prevents feeble mind confusion. We'll keep that so it's not taking up a slot. Uh, bom, 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 bom. You can get that. Oh, we've already lost our blood. You see, we lost a warhammer already. So we're only running around with one warhammer. Luckily, we picked up that second one. So until you get to like chapter two area and you sort of finish off and get your uh like the iron shortage shortage sorted your weapons will always have a chance to break it was a nice little mechanic back in the day i'm gonna stick that on there and stick those in there and we're gonna go to you and we're gonna give these to mom because she's gonna want to learn all of her spells when she gets up we will need to get the scroll case from the emporium which would be quite nice so now we're just gonna go in and go to reform party kick this guy out thank you goodbye Something crazy trouble, evil person End dialogue. Both of them are gone. They'll stay there now. And if you kill them, it won't ruin the continuity in BG2. Now, if you haven't played Baldur's Gate before, I'm not going to... I'm going to try and not do a massive amount of uh, spoilers as I'm talking about it. Because I pretty much I've played this game so many times. I love it. And in here we have a diamond, which is worth 500 gold. Very, very nice. Uh, well, should we... We'll clear out. We'll clear out this map. We'll clear out the map. Kill everything that's on here. Uh, we're actually going to... Why are you, everyone's running ahead of me for some bloody reason. So we'll go over to this side. We'll unlock this here, which will give us uh, the next little road map. We don't need to go... I don't believe we need to go up to the north and the south. But I might grab it just in case. I like to clear up maps, so I apologize if it's going to be a bit of a... And like a headache watching me just clear out all the maps but i don't remember where everything is and i like to grab everything that is available within this game and get as much xp as possible especially because we're going to be having a part of a party right now if i was doing it as a single like a single character playthrough i would dead. literally just be grabbing all of the stuff that i need to grab and getting through the game getting the xp where i need to get the xp etc getting what items i need and continuing completing it that way onto the next one where i spend an inordinate amount of time playing through Baldur's Gate 2. Like, that game really does 
it, it takes up so much time. I love doing all the companion quests. I love doing all that stuff. I have my set companions that I love to use all the time. It's the one of the only games that I've played, one of the only RPGs that I've ever played where I just, I can replay the same characters over and over again. I just love it so much. Baldur's Gate 2 is probably my favorite RPG of all time. Plus, I love Aerie. A lot of people hate her, but I really like Aerie. Don't even have anything that side. That's just where they died. Go and grab something down here. I believe there's a, there should be some bears down here or something. Cadgar's just off scheming. Where are you going? Walking well fast. Not even a berserker. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to be coughing all the bloody time. All the talking. Who's this dude? I don't remember this guy. Who are you? Don't touch me. I it's about to let come any closer, but that seems to work, does it? Well, regardless, I should remain true to the genre. Don't come any closer or I'll jump. Oh, God. No, by all the gods, do not do such a thing. There's so much to live for. You're right, of course. What a fool I was to think that this would solve anything. I didn't solve anything last time. Okay, this is weird. Oh, well, thanks for your concern. Ta. That, that was just weird. I've not seen that before. That is very odd. Does that guy do anything else later? Do you find him later doing anything else? So this is the way to Candlekeep where you can't actually get back into Candlekeep because they'll stop you. So we're not going to go over there and speak to the guards or anything. We're just going to crack on. Uh, 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 what do we have down here? Let's see if we... I don't think we can unlock anything south. I don't think we can. Oh, we can. High Hedge. Where we go and try to turn the apprentice back from... Oh, no, I'm not going to ruin anything. I'm not going to ruin anything. So let's just head over to... Tell you what, we're going to head over and clear this bit out. I can't help myself. I have to clear maps out. I don't know if any of you other guys like that are watching this have ever had that issue where you have to sort of clear everything on the map. Sometimes I'll have to clear every black spot out on the map completely. Oh, here comes Chunkers. Stand away from me. Could you help me, my foster father? I think for your time. Good luck in your travels. He's like, oh, do you need any help? But no, he can't help us do anything. So let's crack on and move to the next area. So over here, and we're going to see this old man, and that happens to be Mr. Elminster. A fair bit desperate, actually. Might you know the way to the friendly army inn? I was told I might find some friends there. That I would. The inn is a short distance to the north. So that guy is like uh, the Gandalf of the Dungeons and Dragons. Gandalf is probably written after this, like... Uh, uh, this guy's probably written after Gandalf. I almost said the Gandalf. Uh, Gandalf's before. I'm pretty sure Gandalf's before Dungeons and Dragons. I'm pretty sure. You better be. I'm making a bloody big mistake. One of them was written before the other, and I'm sure each of them has, like, uh, some sort of influence on the character, each of the characters. But we're actually going to end it there. We're going to be carrying on with this. I'm going to be playing at least an hour a day. I do have the main channel, which is all the guides and stuff and the reviews of survival games if you want to check that out. I'm doing this as a secondary thing on the side because I have a lot more time on my hands now. And I don't want to sort of oversaturate the main channel. So I'm starting up and doing the RPG side of things, which is my favorite genre on this channel. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Make sure to like the video if you did. If you'd like to see some more Baldur's Gate, because we're going to be playing all the way through Baldur's Gate 1. We're going to go through the Siege of Darkspear. We're going to go through Baldur's Gate 2 and then the Throne of Baal with the same two characters, Sovereign and Khadgar. I want to thank you all for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Fly safe and avoid local chat scams.